first decisive step in the conquest of space will be the placing of an object into an orbit wherein it will indefinitely circle the Earth. The idea of a man-made Earth-orbiting satellite had long filled the minds of scientists, scientists like Dr. Werner von Braun. By the early 1950s, Dr. Von Braun was leading a team of rocket engineers at the U.S. Army's Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. There they were hard at work on a surface-to-surface ballistic missile called the Redstone. As development on the Redstone was nearing completion, Dr. Von Braun couldn't help but see the potential non-military applications for the rocket. He said to me one day, with the Redstone, we could do it. And I said, what could we do with the Redstone? And he said, for heaven's sake, launch a satellite, of course, don't you see? (laughs) Beginning back about 1954, von Braun proposed a project which he called Orbiter, which would use the Redstone first stage, and it would have three upper stages of, of small solid propellant rockets and the upper stage would be attached to a payload stage which would enter into Earth orbit. This was the the so-called orbiter mission. At the time, 67 countries were preparing their contributions to the upcoming International Geophysical Year, a period that would span from July 1957 to December 1958. The scientists of the United States will join their efforts with those of the scientists of some 60 other nations to make the most intensive study ever undertaken of our planet. Thanks to the push of the International Geophysical Year, the prospect of a satellite became a reality. Both the United States and the Soviet Union proposed programs to place small artificial satellites in orbit as part of their contributions to the International Geophysical Year 1957-1958. While the United States was now actively committed to launching a satellite, It was not a foregone conclusion that the Army's proposal would be chosen by the Department of Defense, with the Department of Defense choosing the Navy's proposed Project Vanguard over both the Army and Air Force's proposals. Even though the Navy's Vanguard had yet to be built, one of the key deciding factors was that the Vanguard would be a civilian sounding rocket developed by the United States Naval Research Laboratory, as opposed to a military launch vehicle like the Redstone. There was simply a decision made in Washington by then President Eisenhower that the military carrier, the Redstone, if you please, was inappropriate for a civilian type satellite. Lord, the Russians had no such hesitations. As work began on the Vanguard rocket, the Von Braun rocket team, now part of the newly formed ABMA, or Army Ballistic Missile Agency, under the command of Major General John B. Medeiros, continued developing the ideas proposed by Von Braun with Project Orbiter to test the nose cones of the then in development Jupiter missile. Von Braun and the team at ABMA reconfigured a redstone rocket with two additional solid propellant upper stages to test the Jupiter nose cone. This configuration came to be known as the Jupiter C or Jupiter Composite Test Vehicle. If we would have added a third stage, then that launch vehicle could have gone already into an Earth orbit. But the Army did not get permission to uh, launch it. In fact, Medeiros and von Braun had strict orders from the Defense Department not to put a third stage on uh, top of the other two uh, JPL-developed stages. With a mission to launch America's first satellite belonging to the Navy and not the Army, the Army was forced to place their completed satellite launch vehicles and storage inside a warehouse in Huntsville, Alabama, even though they had already successfully launched and tested the Jupiter C rocket by September of 1956. As delays continued to push back the proposed September 1957 launch of the untested Vanguard rocket, the Soviet Union made history on October 4th, 1957, with the launch of Sputnik 1, the world's first satellite. The newly designated Secretary of Defense, Neil McElroy, was at a dinner here in Huntsville, and Gordon Harris, our then public affairs director for the Army, came in and told Werner, that the Russians had fired a Sputnik, and you can imagine the slight turmoil (laughs) that night. At first, nobody could say anything. And then von Braun, he said to McElroy, who was sitting next to him, Mr. Secretary, if I had been given the word, we could have done that a year ago. 
it was known we had this stuff standing in the warehouse here. See, but just didn't work politically. On November 3rd, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 2, with the Soviet Union now out front in the newly minted space race, and doubts starting to arise about the Vanguard rocket being flight ready in time. Secretary of Defense McElroy finally gave permission to the ABMA to launch a satellite. We've been assigned the mission of launching a scientific Earth satellite. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. Let's go, Werner. As the Army began work on launching a satellite in 90 days, the Navy attempted to launch the first American satellite on December 6th with their Vanguard rocket. The Navy team um, had a tough task to fulfill. They had to build within a very short time a totally new rocket and they had to build it with a team and with people who were new at the business. They had no, no, no experience in big rockets. As a citizen, you're sad, and it is not a matter of envy on the contrary, because we knew too much about the, what happened in the background about this thing. They tried to launch the first American satellite and they did not succeed. All eyes were now on the Army to bring America up to speed with the Soviet Union. The Army had no time to spare. They worked with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California to create the rocket's fourth stage, which would house the Explorer 1 satellite. The additional fourth stage transformed the Jupiter C rocket into the newly designated Juno 1. During this time, Dr. Von Braun tasked his friend Ernst Stuhlinger to help find a scientific payload for the satellite in order to give the mission a scientific objective. At that time, I went to Dr. Ben Allen and offered or proposed to him that he should participate in our project of uh, launching a little Geiger counter that could count cosmic rays. Iowa University's Dr. James Van Allen directed the design and build of Explore One's scientific instrumentation, with the primary science instrument being a cosmic ray detector designed to measure the radiation environment in Earth's orbit. Explorer 1 was finally cleared for launch on January 31st, 1958. The whole country waited with bated breath to see if the launch was successful. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fine command. Fine command. command. Fuel tank pressure Rock tank pressure missile power. Ignition. Space tank. A scientific Earth satellite was placed in orbit at five seconds after 10.55 p.m. by means of a Jupiter-C rocket vehicle launched by the Army at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The launch of Explorer 1 was an astonishing success. The scientific instrumentation on board helped discover radiation belts surrounding the Earth, later named the Van Allen Belts, after Dr. James Van Allen himself. What's more, Dr. Werner Von Braun and his rocket team were held as national heroes, with a massive celebration held in Huntsville to honor their accomplishments. The focus of the entire world was put on the Von Braun team here in Huntsville, and an avalanche of mail from the United States and also from foreign countries piled up on Von Braun's desk. Uh, that was, uh, I think, the first time that Huntsville really realized that they had a unique group of people here that had accomplished something that the entire world had noticed and paid attention to. The legacy of Explore One is still felt to this day. Explore One's launch kick-started the Explorers Program, a space exploration program that still provides flight opportunities for physics, geophysics, heliophysics, and astrophysics investigations. Starting with Explorer 6 in August of 1959, program operations were assumed by NASA, and since then, over 90 space missions have been launched, with Explorer missions still ongoing, seeking to expand our knowledge of the universe.